Tasmania. We flew in last night and stayed at this Airbnb and also picked up this rental car. This is our rental car and no, we didn't actually rent anything this big ourselves, but when we arrived last night, they said that they had already rented out all their small vehicles, which is how we have ended up with this huge seven seater van that is way too big for us, but it's amazing that it's so spacious and has tons of room for all of our bags. So this is what we have for the next five days. After a half hour drive from the center of Hobart, we are now at our first official stop in Tasmania, which is the summit of Mount Wellington. Mount Wellington rises 1,270 meters above sea level. And there's apparently an enclosed viewing platform up here, which is a really good thing because I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the wind is so strong, it's shaking the car. We've already seen some incredible views on the drive up, but now we're gonna take in the views from the top. from up here are absolutely amazing but there are definitely a couple of considerations if you are wanting to come to the summit of Mount Wellington. The first definitely to do with the weather you definitely need to wrap up warm it is 10 degrees colder up here than it is in the city and that's not even the worst part the worst part is definitely the wind chill we only spent a few minutes outside and we are coming back into the car frozen to the bone so just a couple of things to think about if you're wanting to come up here it's definitely worth it to come up here because the views are breathtaking and if you are dressed appropriately and if you have the time there are actually a couple of hiking trails that you can start from up here at the summit they take about an hour and a half to an hour and 20 minutes each, so it's definitely a further option. But we don't have the time to do that today, and the wind is just making it absolutely prohibitive, and we're here in the summer. We move on to our next port call for the day. Port. That's a hint. just had the most spectacular drive from Hobart to drumroll please Port Arthur <laughs> We just got our tickets. They cost 47 Australian dollars per person and also include an audio guide and a harbour cruise and that's just the standard two-day access to the site.
just come off our free 20 minute harbor tour that was included in the ticket price and we thought that before we explored the rest of the historic site we should probably give you some historical context. When Australia was first discovered by the British Empire, the British Empire sought to use this land as a means of establishing penal colonies, meaning that they would take their criminals and rather than putting them into British prisons, which at the time were overcrowded, they would send them here to not only make them serve their sentences out, but also to help grow the empire into these lands. The idea would then be that when these criminals would fulfill their sentences, they would then be reformed and then they would be put back into the society that they're helping to create to then help what would then become the Commonwealth of Australia. The majority of convicts that came through the system were successfully reintroduced into society. However, there were, of course, repeat offenders that kept on committing crimes despite their incarceration. And for those, then they would be sent to secondary punishment sites. And that's where Port Arthur comes in. It was a secondary punishment site. But before it was that, it was settled as a timber station in 1830 and turned into the penal colony that it's famous for in 1833. It was used over the next 44 years and it closed in 1877. While the criminals were here, they produced various goods and products. So they would make bricks and worked stone, furniture, clothing. They even have a dockyard here where they would produce ships and boats. Because of the nature of the convicts that would be sent here, as well as the very harsh conditions that they were first introduced to, then this has the reputation of being one of the worst prisons in the history of the British Empire. And now that we've given you the history lesson, it's time to show you what we mean. This building behind me was originally built as a flour mill and a granary. And the grain was ground by a water powered mill. However, when the water flow wasn't adequate, they actually made the prisoners walk on a treadmill to power it. And that was a really harsh form of punishment. Now, when they realized that this wasn't working anymore, they decided to renovate this building between 1854 and 1857 to be a penitentiary. And not only did the penitentiary house the prisoners, but it also contained a library and a chapel. If you're wondering what those lines are on the floor, then these are the outlines of the individual cells that the prisoners would be placed in. As you can see, it is not a large floor space at all. Very harsh conditions indeed. behind me was the Commandant's House. This was initially erected in 1833 when the colony was established and the Commandant, who was the most senior officer overseeing the overall colony, would be based here. The building was initially much smaller than this but every Commandant that came here would end up expanding and expanding the grounds to its current state now. Unfortunately, there was also some pretty severe punishment. 
Initially, this was to do with the physical, which would include the likes of flogging with a cat of nine tails. However, the officers at the colony started to realize that physical punishment wasn't sufficient. And so then they started to think more about the mental side of incarceration, and that is when they built this building behind, which is called the separate prison. The idea behind this actually became the precursor to what we now know as solitary confinement. The idea was that these people would be completely stripped of their identities, only called by their cell number, they weren't permitted to communicate with any other person, and even when they were outside of their cell, then they were forced to wear a mask. In addition to this, they were kept in these cells 23 hours of every day and only permitted one hour of exercise in a very thin slit of land. And that was to be their punishment. If they still stepped out of line despite that, then there would be a separate punishment room, which was a very, very small confined space, which was soundproofed and completely pitch black. This is the punishment cell. Pitch darkness with no sound. We've just finished up a really interesting, if not quite long day at Port Arthur. We need a bit of time just to collect our thoughts, so we're going to head back to our Airbnb and then at that point we'll give you our opinions on the whole thing. just arrived at our Airbnb and we had a little bit of time to reflect on what we saw over at Port Arthur. For me, coming from the UK and learning history from very much a UK lens, then there are generally speaking a lot of parts about the British Empire that you're not told. You're only really told the very positive sounding aspects of all things and how glorious it all was. You never really get told the full extent of exactly what happened in the countries that the British Empire colonized. Living in Canada and also touring around places like here is a major eye-opener to see exactly what did go down and finding out that actually not all of it is very pretty and some of it is downright disturbing seeing things like this it hits pretty hard because when you start to realize that the conditions were pretty horrible when it comes to how the convicts were treated when they came over the conditions that they were put in because it wasn't just really a prison setup is also a you are more or less stuck on a desert island you have to survive while also being incarcerated the whole concept of it just sounds crazy I, it, it just baffles me sometimes as to how humans can do this to one another that plus hearing about things like residential schools back in Canada really takes the shine off the British Empire and really shows it for what a lot of other people already understand it to be so yeah it was definitely interesting and the bit that I think got me the most was the separate prison when they kind of decided that just flogging people wasn't enough and they decided to try and like break somebody's spirit and dehumanize them. I really struggled to talk about it 
afterwards with Rachel because I think mentally that just broke me. In my opinion, like no matter what somebody may have done, no one deserves that kind of thing. I would never wish that on my worst enemy. It's obviously a disturbing part of history, but it is a very important part of history and certainly I'm overall very glad that we did this and I'm glad that we took the time to visit this while we are in Tasmania. Yeah, I don't have much more to add to that. I mean, it was an emotional experience when you stop to think about what the historical facts actually meant for real human beings. But I think it's really important to learn about the foundations of the country that you're visiting in. And that is not to take away from the aboriginals who were here for 40 or 60,000 years before the European settlers. I just mean that in terms of this country's modern history and it becoming the Australia, that country that we think of today. The colonialization era really has a lot to answer for as far as that all goes, but it doesn't mean that we should shy away from learning it. But anyway, as Nick mentioned at the beginning of this clip, we have arrived to our Airbnb let me show you around because it is huge and amazing. Entire place is ours. The bathroom that you've just seen, the bedroom, this dining room, living room area that also has cots and beds in it if you have more people with you in your party because I think it sleeps six. And this kitchen with a microwave, refrigerator, kettle, hot plate, sink, wine glasses, coffee mugs. And then down here I think they have, yep, a toaster for you to use. And in these cupboards, there's pots and pans and dishes. Cutlery is in here. It's so cute. And I think we were told that in this fridge, yes, she's made us homemade muffins and there's some butter and jam. Amazing. We're gonna call it a night because our Airbnb hosts have graciously invited us to have a glass of wine with them. So we're going a hundred percent take them up on that and we will pick this up tomorrow. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.